so I picked this thing up out of the trash. It looked like it was in pretty good shape. Um, and from playing with RC stuff, I've learned a bit about these power wheels here. And uh, a lot of times people just throw them out because the batteries go bad and they don't want to mess with it. Um, got this four wheeler for 25 bucks off of somebody because it was like that. Thing is super fun. Um, but this is the newest project here. And uh, sure enough, I got it home and I found a way to make these things like super fast and fun. These are 12 volt, both the four wheeler and uh, this little dune buggy here. And what I found is if you take your Dewalt drill battery, which is 20 volt lithium, and you just find a way to shove these leads in the end here, you've got a positive and a negative here. Um, these are 20 volt, and these things will rip off that. Um, I haven't had a motor break or a controller break in one yet. Um, my son's been playing with them, and it tends to just seems like about doubles the speed. So whatever it was like before in this gear, um, this this is like the fast gear, how it was with the normal 12 volt batteries, and then you bang that up, and it's like it gets 20 volts, and it, it really rips then. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. Essentially, it's as easy as that. Um, you just go ahead and figure out, this, this is the positive, this white one on this one, so you just put in, there's a little positive end on here and you can see that. Now, I found um, that these Dean's connectors here actually have like a little spring clip on them and if you cut them in half, see if you can see that, it actually slides in nice and tight. It can be hard to do with one hand because it's a nice tight fit, but yeah, see, it's in there really tight. And then what I did on the inside is I just cut a bungee cord and drilled two holes, and now I can put this bungee cord set up in here, and it holds it real tight when they're jumping around and going real fast and everything like that. So I'm about to go ahead and see, I cut it in half here, and I'm gonna solder, uh, I'm gonna cut this and solder this lead on here, and uh, We'll be pretty much set to go with this. You just slide it in when it's time to use it. And uh, can't really beat it for the price if you got one of those Dewalt drill batteries. If not, you can go buy one of these Dewalt drills here for a hundred bucks and it comes with two of those little batteries. Um, they're not, they don't last a whole long time, maybe 10 minutes, but you can always upgrade to one of these. Um, and these will last, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes of just full speed so uh, yeah if you ever see a power wheel in the trash once you figure this out it's pretty much yours to you know have at that point and all you got to do is throw your battery in so anytime I see a power wheel that's 12 volts or more um, I just go ahead and grab it and we got a new toy and this thing is a blast so uh, I'll, I'll clip in some videos of my son riding it but yeah this is how to uh, salvage a 12 volt power wheel and make it super fun and fast for nothing. All right, so I got this soldered on to the negative wire here. Um, you can see it's just a Dean's connector. I just dremeled right in half so I could use half of it. And then I soldered it onto the lead. And these tend to make the best connection for when you're pushing it into one of these Dewalt batteries here. Nice and tight, not going anywhere. Um, if you don't know how to solder, which I didn't when I started playing around with this stuff, you can get, trying to get a good focus, you can get a good connector like this and just pinch it onto the wire. Um, these don't fit really that tight. They're kind of loose and you kind of have to hope that they stay in when the kid's playing with it. So you almost want to like, put a strap over it or something. I don't really like these. This is what I started with. It worked fine for a while, but now that I know how to solder, um, I figured I would just go ahead and use this uh, Dean's connector here. So I just thought I would do, just go ahead and film me soldering this lead on for those who don't know much about soldering. Um, so I got this little Heiko one over here that I like. It's gonna heat up to 750. Um, for us real quick they're about a hundred bucks 
and these are called helping hands and then I haven't been soldering very long but I found that flux helps quite a bit and I just paint it on with a paintbrush so you'll see me do that here in a second and then I have found that using a really thin solder tends to make it easier when you're starting out um, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and paint a little bit of let me get this zoomed in a little bit here for you so you can see what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to come over here and start working. Um, go ahead and paint a little bit of flux on here. This is like a bonding agent. I, I don't really know how to describe what it's doing, but it really helps when you're soldering to get the solder to adhere to what you're soldering. So first, I'm going to put a little bit of solder on this side of the lead. I'm sticking this in here, because this kind of cleans the tip for you and helps the solder stick a little bit better. So first, I'm going to heat this up. Oh, great, it moved on me. Perfect. So I'm going to heat this up. And then this solder tip I use is almost like a flathead screwdriver, so I'll go ahead and start a little bit on the actual tip. And then, boom. So you can see that came out real nice. You probably wanna have a fan going when you're doing this because this stuff is not good to breathe in. Um, I'm feeling a little, breathing a little bit of it earlier, and I'm not feeling too great, but. Hopefully I didn't do nothing to myself. And then this is called tinning the wire. So I'm heating up the wire. And then once you get the solder to start flowing, you kind of just run the solder onto the wire. It's gonna turn that silver color. Now I got all this stuff here on the end of my tip. So I'm gonna come over here, clean it again, shoving it into that. And that's gonna make my tip uh, this is hard to see on here because it's not focusing real good, but my tip's nice and clean now. And now next, I'm going to put these together with my helping hands here that haven't been the best, most helpful. Now the best thing to do, I think, is just to go ahead and press on top of this and get them to bond together if you got enough heat takes a second there we go but for some reason I'm not good at doing that that way oh now we lost it like I said I haven't been doing this very long um, what I found works better for me so you get these nice and tight here, like pressed up against each other. It's probably not the way you're supposed to do it, but then I'll take a little bit of solder to get things, get the heat going a little bit. So for some reason when you touch the solder onto the wire, tends to help the way that it flows a little better. So I just kind of bonded those together. This is a lot harder to solder than two wires. When you have two wires just kind of wrapped around it into each other, you can just heat it up and then feed this small wire into it. And it works a whole lot easier. That's on there. It's a, a decent joint. Let's see. See if I can get this any closer so you can see that will work um, and then we're just gonna slide this over and take the hair dryer and uh, heat shrink that onto there and that should be a really good connection and not give us any more problems